A new player on the guitar market has just arrived and you know what? It will change everything. Want to know why? What's up fellow Tone Chasers? I hope you're doing great because I am for sure. It's been a long time since I felt so excited with a new player on the budget pedals market. In today's episode, we'll review the first pad of this massive, promising company, the A-Labs Audio. They came to life on the end of the previous year with their first series of guitar pedals, called Aiden Adventures Series, featuring four totally originally fully stereo pedals, the Time Slip Delay, the Setus Reverb, the Nova Drift Multimod and the Orbital Pitch Shifter. The A-Labs is a company from Singapore, with manufacturing in China, and as we will see ahead, they promise to deliver boutique quality for a really affordable price, competing with Chinese local brands like Joyo, Moore, Hotone, and even Flama. So if you're concerned if these pedals fit to your pocket, don't worry my budget-friendly chaser friend. We'll start reviewing the Nova Drift Multimod, a fully stereo multimod containing 9 amazing algorithms. Sounds good? Would you like to see the other pedals from the series? Let me know in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's talk about the A-Labs Nova Drift. Let's start unboxing this pretty creature. You can already notice that the packaging is simply gorgeous, and when you open it, wow! It is really an affordable pedal? It looks like a Walrus Audio pedal. It comes with small souvenirs like those stickers and also a pretty cool pick with A-Labs logo. The manual is really well made, with a massive amount of description, as this pedal is packed with tons of hidden functions, on which we will deep dive during this video. Now, let's take a look at the pedal itself. It is massively robust, amazing printing quality, and the art is wow. The knobs are pretty sturdy. The foot switch is a soft model, and the toggle switch is also amazing. You will find the two stereo inputs on the right and two stereo outputs on the left, in which you have three output configurations. If you decide to go in and out mono, you should use the left in and out plugs. If you decide to go in mono and exit stereo, you have two options. Plugging in on left, you have a stereo output with a mix of wet and dry sounds on both outputs. But if you plug in on right, you get a pure wet output on the out left and the mix of wet and dry on the right output. With that, you can decide the best way you would like to mix your output. Of course, you can also go stereo in and out, giving you both combinations of dry and wet for individual signals of each input. Pretty cool, yeah? The pedal also is flexible enough to run as a true bypass or buffer bypass, which means that it allows you to keep the trails. The standard setting runs in buffer bypass, but if you would like to change it, it's pretty simple. Just keep pressing the foot switch when plugging the power supply. The LED will flash for some seconds, so it means you are in power-up system mode. You'll be able to do several settings on this mode, so remember it. Now, if you'd like to have buffer bypass off, enabling the true bypass mode, you simply need to choose the direction on which the tap ramping toggle switch is pointing at. If it's pointing to tap, it means you are in buffer bypass and the LED will flash in red. If you move it to the ramping mode, the one with the infinity symbol, the pedal will move to true bypass and the LED will flash in green. Once you are done, you can click on the foot switch to restart the pedal. But once you are here, let's talk about another really cool feature that you can change on the power up system mode. The changing of the mix knob for volume mode. This function is pretty simple to explain, but really helpful. Some people prefer to have always their dry signal untouched, so for this reason, the mix knob can be a little bit tricky. For that, you can decide to change it actually for a regular modulation volume function. So, for that, you again enter the power up system mode, and if you turn the mix knob to the far right, the LED will start flashing in yellow. If you rotate opposite to the far left, it will move back to the mix function. This time, the LED will be flashing in blue. Once you're done, you can again press the foot switch and the pedal will restart. Are we done already? Nope. You can also set up the tempo for the 1 4th beat division and the 1 3rd beat division. For that, once again, you need to flick the switch to tap mode and keep the foot switch engaged. Once the LED will turn blue, you can rotate the depth knob to adjust the 1 4th beat tempo. Now let's talk a little bit about the pedal controls before we deep dive into another interesting function the momentary ramping controls. 
the pedal works with 5 knobs and 1 toggle switch. The most basic controls are the rate, depth and mix, or volume, on which you can adjust the traditional modulation parameters, changing a little for each type of modulation you will be running. After that you have the modulation selection knob with 9 types of modulations. Vibe, Chorus, Multi-Chorus, Phaser, Filter, Rotary, Flanger, Tremolo and Ring. Later you have a double function knob, the X or Tone knob. It works on the following logic. If the tap ramp toggle is pointing up, it adjusts the X parameter, on which you will find the specific effect for each mod in the following table. If the toggle is pointing down, it works as a regular tone control for the modulation, changing the brightness of it, except for the filter and ring mods, on which it will work as a frequency selector. Pretty cool, yeah? Now let's move to the toggle. It allows you to change between tap tempo mode and the momentary function mode. On tap tempo, if you keep the foot switch pressed for some seconds, it will change the LED to blue, so you can tap the tempo in the foot switch. After 3 seconds of in operation, the LED turns back to white and it turns to normal engaging mode. If you move the toggle to momentary function, it opens again another range of possibilities. The ramping mode allows you to record a parameter change curve up to 5 seconds. This ramping can be done in all the other functions except by the X, which means the rate, the depth, the mix, or volume, and the tone. It is a pity that the X cannot be ramped, but it's already pretty cool to have this flexibility for the others, eh? The pedal comes with a standard function of simply bypassing the modulation if you click on the momentary foot switch, which means it basically moves the mix to pure drag. Every time that you wish to erase the curve that is recorded, you need simply to press the foot switch until the LED becomes blue and move the toggle back to tap mode. The pedal records one curve for each type of mod, so you can have individual ramps for each mode you are using. But now let's see how to do it. It is also pretty simple. Keep pressing the foot switch until the LED turns to blue, then you can move the knob that you wish to record and it will start flashing the LED in blue, showing it is recording. You have 5 seconds to record the ramp for each individual knob. Once you engage, the pedal will combine all the individual curves you have recorded in one single behavior. To engage the ramping, you can simply keep the foot switch pressed. I think we have stressed pretty much all the functions this little monster carries. So finally, let's hear a little of its sounds. Now, let's see in practice the ramping function. Amazing, eh? If you would like to hear in more detail the sound of this pedal, I suggest you watch the long no-talking review I have recorded. 
I'll keep it here on the cards and on the fixed comment below. Now, the moment that everyone was waiting. How much would a pedal in this quality and functionality would cost? The A-Labs is changing fastly the price of those little treasures. So be aware that the values I will show you here can be already changed if you will be watching this video in the future. The A-Labs released this pedal at the end of previous year at a price of 99 US dollars. Yes, you heard it right, less than 100 bucks. But anyway, the current price it's being sold for is already around $125. So if you're interested in buying it, do it now, before Josh Scott will review them and they will cost more than a clue. So my friends, I believe that the conclusion is pretty obvious. This is an ultimate game changer on the affordable market. If really, A-Labs will be able to sustain these pedal prices at this current range. Of course, the price increase has already shown us that it can be only a smart move to enter the high-end pedals market competing head-to-head -head with producers like Boros Audio, Wampler, Earthquake Devices, and many others. I need to admit that I never expected to have such quality and functionality for such an affordable price, without having, until now, any unethical explanation. No copyright gray zone navigation, no design copies, nothing. Simply a beast of a pedal on a budget. So what are you waiting for? Go buy yours! Or no, if you will not agree with me, now is your time to let me know. Keep your comments on the session below, I am attentively answering all the comments you are dropping. And as always, if this content was helpful to you somehow, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button so YouTube can share this video with many others, and turning on the notification bell. That's all for today, I'll catch up on the next, and as always, keep on rocking!